Happy New Year to you brothers. Thanks for your support and loyalty in the year 2022. I look forward to providing you with more wonderful videos in this year 2023. We will be starting this year by teaching you how to develop self-discipline. Of course you already know that without discipline the journey to self-improvement will be difficult. So, what is self-discipline? Self-discipline is your ability to do the uncomfortable but important things when nobody's forcing you to do it. When you were a kid, your parents told you what to do for the most part. When you're in school, it's your teacher telling you what to do. Now that you have become a man, the responsibility is yours. There is no one to force you to stay in line. It's your choice. Oftentimes, it's really easy to negotiate with yourself and let yourself win. But there is a way to bypass this, and we're going to show you how to do it in this video. Take a close look at extremely disciplined people, whether they're in the military, entrepreneurs, or high-performing athletes. You'll find that they all have something in common. They were put into a position where being disciplined was not a nice thing to have, but an absolute requirement. You're either disciplined or you were out. The context negotiates the terms for you, not yourself. And this is the first point into building discipline. You need to understand that discipline is built within a given context. You don't really wake up one day and tell yourself, okay, today I'm going to be disciplined out of the blue. You need a good reason. And on top of that, you need to emulate an environment where being disciplined is the only way to get anything done. When you are in college and you have a mountain of assignments and homework, the only way to get it done is to just cut the crap and get to work. There's no way around it, past it or underneath it. You can't negotiate with anyone, nor can you change the terms of the deal. You get what you get. And that kind of makes it a bit easier to be disciplined because someone gives you a framework to follow and your one and only job is to actually follow through with it. There's nothing else to do. But in the real world, there is no context or framework. You need to build it yourself. For example, let's say you're getting married in six months and you've got two options in terms of what you wear. You either go with what fits you now or you get something slimmer. If you go with the second option, you build a context where for the next six months it's required for you to be disciplined. This is a random example but you can use this way of thinking with pretty much everything in life. You can make the decision to put yourself in a context where being disciplined is required. It's up to you. For example, we made the decision to post a video every single day Monday to Sunday. This context forces us to always operate at a specific level of discipline. Now this works on a macro scale, but you can apply the same reasoning on a micro scale, and the way to do that is through tight time slots and deadlines. The more time you have to do something, the longer it's going to take you to get it done. It's like an unwritten rule of life, and it's always going to be true. If you've got three days to do something, you'll spend the first two days thinking about it, and the last one panicking. It's just the way things are for most people. So if you want to emulate a context that requires discipline, give yourself little time. One way to do that is to batch things up back to back. Let's take meetings for example. One meeting in a given day can take three hours, but if you schedule six meetings in three hours, you'll quickly see how 30 minutes is more than enough time to quickly figure something out. And if it takes more than that, well, someone is unprepared and wasting everyone else's time. So we've got context for starters. The next important thing you need to get if you want to force your way into being disciplined is high value stakes. Something very important to you needs to happen at the end. Let's say a friend calls you up and asks you to grab coffee tomorrow at 5 a.m. You might do it, you might not. But let's say the last plane back home leaves tomorrow morning at 5 a.m. You're 100% getting on that flight, or else you'll be stranded for the holidays and far away from your family and friends. You see, when you add high-value stakes into the equation, you add the emotional aspect. You make it personal. It becomes highly important to you, and you don't want to mess it up. This is the reason for your context. If you want to become disciplined, you need to have something to be disciplined for. This reason is your own to find out because it depends on the context. 
but it's extremely important to not be vague with it. If you don't give yourself a good enough reason, you'll quit halfway through. So we've got a context that forces you to be disciplined and high value stakes that make it important to you and make things personal. These are two main ways to start building your discipline. But there's one more thing, a secret ingredient, if you will, something that most people really don't tell you about. And it's probably the most important step. And that is the right amount of effort. To better understand this, let's look at how your mind actually works. Your brain has one primal function, and that is to survive. It pretty much regulates your body, so you don't die. Obviously, it's way more complicated than that. But for what we're about to tell you, this is all you need to know. Now, even though its main job is to keep you alive, it doesn't always send out the right signals. For example, your mind very often overestimates all on purpose the amount of effort required to do something. It does this to preserve energy. So in the super common scenario when a lion jumps on you from a bush you've got enough juice to run. Well this is in essence what procrastination is. Your mind overestimates the effort required to do something and it sends signals to the body to make you feel tired. This is why you sometimes feel tired without doing anything at all. So why is this important to know? Well, the most common mistake you can make when trying to be disciplined is to overschedule and overcommit. You need to start small and build up momentum. You'll start to handle more effort and your mind won't see it as too much of a problem anymore. This is how you build discipline in the long term and add it as an actual skill in your arsenal. This is why you can see someone extremely disciplined and your first thought is I'll never be able to do that but they've been doing it for years. They had the right context, the right reason, and it's not as much effort anymore, it's just how they are now. Being disciplined is not about achieving massive success or being famous, it's about freedom. If you want financial freedom, you need to be disciplined with your money. If you want time freedom, you need to be disciplined with your time management. If you want life freedom, you need to be disciplined with your priorities. Discipline is not a way to work yourself into the ground with barely any sleep. It's a way for you to do what's important, so you get to enjoy what's enjoyable. And that's all there is to it. You can build discipline if you follow these three things. Context, reason, and the right amount of effort. Do this right, and you'll be a completely different person in six months. Thanks for watching. Once again, Happy New Year. If you like this video, then hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more future videos. Till then, goodbye. All women want a man who meets their standards and treats them well, someone who fits the mold of what she considers to be a perfect significant other. He is always responsible and kind to others, which makes them feel safe. And you have to understand that it's impossible to fake it. Most men try to act like they're a bad boy around women, but it only works for so long before the woman sees through them. So, in order to be irresistible to women, you really have to work towards self-improvement. By the end of this video, you'll know six ways to better yourself so that no woman will be able to resist you. So let's get started. 1. Make the best use of your first seven seconds. Multiple studies show that when people meet someone new, they make snap judgments about that person in a fraction of a second based on their physical appearance. You only get one chance to make a first impression, so it's imperative that you make it count. Gut reactions are more commonly known as thin slicing. This is when the brain creates patterns and connections based on a limited amount of information or experience. Malcolm Gladwell explores this topic in detail in his book Blink. He provides examples of thin slicing throughout the novel to show how important initial interactions are. Do you know that by improving your posture, you can make a better first impression? In fact, researchers at Princeton found that people are better able to read emotions from body language than from facial expressions. So next time you're meeting someone new, remember to pull your shoulders back and hold your head high. These simple cues will give the impression of confidence, even if you're feeling nervous on the inside. 
Also, making eye contact with people is a great way to appear more confident and friendly. When you meet someone new, make sure to look them in the eye and give them a genuine smile. 2. Improve your look. While being physically fit and attractive does help, it's not the be-all end-all. Remember to style yourself well, take care of your skin and teeth, work out regularly, and carry positive body language to really make an impact. No pressure, just start with working out. Getting in shape does not have to be rocket science. You also do not have to get super fit as not all women are looking for men with six-pack abs. Instead, any sort of physical activity that tones your muscles and gives you energy will help. Also, don't forget that gyms are often packed with loads of hot women, and if you stick to one long enough you'll be like the skilled fisherman in a pool of sexy fish. On to grooming. Get a haircut from an experienced hairstylist that complements your face and is easy to take care of. Avoid getting hairstyles women don't find attractive. Add some hygienic practices into your daily routine. Brush your teeth correctly, shower every day, and only wear clean clothes. Also, fashion plays a role in attraction. However, you don't need to spend copious amounts of money on designer clothes. Any flattering outfit will do the trick. And if you're unsure about what to wear, go for a classic white button-down shirt with rolled-up sleeves. It never fails. 3. Improve your hygiene. When you're meeting a woman, the last thing you want them to notice is that you smell bad. So before leaving your house, do a quick checkup. Brush your teeth, make sure you're wearing clean clothes and cologne. When you're meeting a woman, the last thing you want them to notice is that you smell bad. 4. Respect and status can help you get ahead. I often hear people say that good-looking guys have an easy time with women. While this is partially true, I've seen firsthand that it's not always the case. I know some men who look better in a Superman suit than Henry Cavill does, but can't keep their cool around attractive women. On the other hand, I've also hung out with average-looking guys who had no problems chasing girls. One of my best friends doesn't fit the mold of a Chad but still manages to attract some of the most beautiful women. He's shorter than average, slightly balding, and usually carrying extra weight, but he has success in his career, great style sense, and excellent social skills. As a result, he regularly goes on dates with models. As the saying goes, believing that looks are everything is like shooting yourself in the foot. If you're not blessed with good looks, there are still other ways to make yourself more attractive. One way is by talking to people. The more you practice, the better you'll become at it. Additionally, try hanging around people who are both intelligent and successful. This will give women the impression that you're a well-rounded individual. Take a good hard look at yourself and figure out what it is that you don't like about yourself. It might take some therapy or life changes like getting a new job or making new friends, but eventually these efforts will pay off in terms of how women perceive you. 5. Make her feel that you have other options besides her. Women are most attracted to men who seem in demand and like they have other romantic options. This doesn't mean you should cheat on her with her best friend. It just means that women find men more attractive when other women are interested in them too. This is the reason why women are interested in celebrities and the moment guys wear a wedding or engagement ring, they get more attention from women. If you ask a female friend to help you meet more women, your chances of succeeding are far more than if you ask a male friend. And women always want a man who chooses them over another woman because he desires them instead of just needing anyone. 6. Improve your money-making skills If you're looking to improve your dating life and become irresistible to women, financial freedom is important. While money may not be everything, it can certainly get you some of the things that women find attractive. Good coaching, healthy food, nice trips, social proof, nice clothes, and self-confidence. Even a homeless guy with confidence can attract women but he'll have a lot more success if he's got some cash in his pocket. Though all men want to be irresistible to women, few know how. Some may see it as a mystery, 
but the answer is simple, self-improvement. By bettering oneself, any man can become the one that other men aspire to be and women want in their bed. If you follow these tips, your dating life will be transformed within six months or less. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. See you in the next video.